So yes, it's a widely debated topic at this moment. Where are those women in science? We both grew up as the extra pair of hands to my dad and she to her older brothers, which introduced us to the world of mechanical engineering. It then made us intrinsically motivated in technical solutions and science. Um, a lot of effort has been put into the promotion um, of science for girls at primary and secondary schools by means of workshops and introducing them to role models. This way, they have someone to look up to, to see what they could be doing as grown-ups. These efforts were made to, to, to inspire girls, like us, um, to the world of science. But now, when we are actually at the point of making our choice of career, where are we going, what do we want to do, we are both doubting whether we want to stay in this field. So here the question pops up, how do we get, but also keep women in science? We think we're heading in the right direction with these uh, inspiring and role models. But we should not only focus on only on the intake of women and technology and university and companies, but what we need is an overall cultural change. And we believe that this generation, you and we, can make this happen. Future women, but actually everybody should know that women are just as good in math and physics as they can be in economics and languages. Imagine, you are a newcomer in a company. Suddenly, everybody leaves the room without saying you anything. I just kept on working. But only the third time this happened, my supervisor came over to tell me that the rest was having coffee. For me, these are just some kind of social values. And maybe if these men were introduced to some basic communicative skill... Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is my example, and it, it, really, it really happens. So I'm not speaking for everybody, of course, but it's, it really happens. So if these, these men were introduced to some basic social and communicative skills through trainings during their education, for example, the situation could have been avoided. I'm saying maybe, you don't ever know, of course. Um, another example. Our society is amazed if a girl is able to drill a hole in the wall herself, or even when she turns out to be good at mathematics. But these are just prejudices and assumptions which are rooted in our overall culture, which make women, especially women, feel insecure about their scientific skills and capabilities. Also in my case, after every disappointing grade, I still doubt whether I'm right enough for the study. But, in fact, I'm currently working on my graduation project, so apparently I'm doing something right. The third example is an example uh, from, our pro from our projects. While I was working on a project, um, I experienced that if a supervisor asked for a solution of a problem, men often bragged about their knowledge, like, saying, sure, I can do that. However, I was more reserved in the way I communicated and actually said what I was capable of, but also shared my doubts. The result was that my supervisor and fellow students showed less faith in me, but in the end, due to those communication differences, uh, yeah, they showed less faith in me, but in the end, the results were the same. So these were three examples uh, of our experiences. And uh, what we wanted to say in the beginning was that uh, this is what we, what on the short-term solution, uh, uh, we can change uh, this in the, in the culture right now, but uh, we also have to change the roots of the culture. And that can be done by uh, several things, uh, small things, to make women believe that they can be good uh, in math and physics uh, as man can be, and uh, actually you can all do that uh, to create this change by, for example, small steps like buying your girl some Lego and your boy a doll. <laughs> and on the short term, we have to become aware of the differences between the man and the women. Uh, think about our examples, the communication differences, the prejudices and assumptions, but also the social values, the differences in the, the values. So our advice is 
start to uh, create the, the knowledge about the differences and uh, yeah, educate the employees by trainings or personal coaching. And I still see you thinking, how? So we will conclude with three advices, and this is what you're going to do from tomorrow. Yes. The first one. Set up a role play to open the dialogue between men and women. It's an interesting eye-opener which shows men and women, both, their differences in communication. And we'll guarantee you will have fun as well. The second is um, create a possibility for women uh, of, for example, different departments to uh, join, to connect and share their experiences. Um, and for small companies, try to avoid hiring uh, a single woman and placing her in an already existing male team. And last but not least, our third advice. Please create openness in your company. What are the actual benefits of more gender diversity? Create support amongst the current employees. And don't forget to give the pioneers, any pioneer, the possibility to talk, but also to advise the company. So, everybody, we are asking you, don't just only focus on the intake of women in technology, but start changing the culture from tomorrow on. <laughs>